Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and this is the third and final episode of the how to make a cool random level generation tutorial series inspired by Derek Hughes masterpiece Spelunky using of course Unity and C Sharp. So in the previous video we almost completed the level's critical path generation. The only problem was that if the level generator went down twice in a row, sometimes a nasty dead end would appear, blocking the player from advancing to the game's exit. The reason this is happening is because the level generator is getting ready to move down, so it spawns a room with either openings in all four directions, or a room with openings at the left, right and bottom. Then it spawns a room with a top opening, but then it prepares to move down again, so it destroys the current room if it doesn't have a bottom opening, and replaces it with one that does. The thing is, that room could be of type 2, in other words a room with just left, right and a bottom opening, so no top openings which obviously creates a dead end. So what we're going to do to fix this is calculate if the level generator has moved down twice in a row. If it has, we'll make sure to spawn a room with openings in all four directions, and not a room with only a bottom and left and right openings. This way we are guaranteed no dead ends. So inside of my level generation script, I'll create an int variable called down counter, and then simply increase down counter of 1 when the level generator moves down. Then, if the level generator wants to move down and realizes that the room it just spawned doesn't have a bottom opening, then we want to make an if statement. If down counter is greater or equal to 2, then we'll spawn a room with openings in all four directions, because that means the level generator has moved down twice in a row, even three times in a row. And of course, we'll make sure to destroy the other room we had spawned and that didn't have any bottom opening. If not, then we'll simply spawn either a room with openings in all four directions, or a room with left, right and a bottom opening since there's no risk of dead ends. Now just make sure to reset down counter equal to 0 when the level generator moves left or right, because that means the level generator isn't about to move down twice in a row anymore. Awesome, and now I'll hit play and you can be sure that you won't find any more dead ends in your game's level. Alright, it's now time to fill up all this empty space with other random rooms once the main path has been generated. Now of course there are plenty of ways of doing this and I really urge you to test things out by yourself and only then take a look at how I'll do it. Even if you end up with loads of red error messages or bugs, you'll have learnt a lot simply by experimenting on your own. With that said, I'm going to duplicate this pose empty game object and using my snappy movement, I'll move it down one room and I'll duplicate that empty game object multiple times so I have to have a pose empty game object placed at the center of each room area. I'll now create a new C sharp script called something like spawn room and add that to all my pose empty game objects. Inside the script I'll be checking whether my pose game object detects a room nearby once the main path generation completes. If it does detect a room then it won't do anything. If not then it will simply spawn a random room from the level generation's room array. Again, like in Spelunky, we don't need to worry about whether or not these side rooms are walled off. They won't stop the player from advancing to the exits, and if he really wants to access one of these closed rooms, he can always destroy the terrain using bombs for example. So in my update function, I'll create a collider 2D variable called room detection and set that equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle. And in the parentheses, I'll set a position for the invisible circle, so the game object's current position. Then I'll type out a value for its radius. One will do. And lastly, I can plug in a layer mask, so I'll create a public layer mask variable called what is room and copy paste that right there. We're basically doing the same thing as we did in the last episode. In other words, creating an invisible circle that will detect if there is any room nearby. This time though, we won't be destroying the room, we simply want to see if there is a room. But if there isn't any room nearby, so if room detection is equal to null, then we want to spawn a random room. So I'll create a public variable of type level generation called level gen, and now I can make an int variable called rand and set that equal to a random number between 0 and the amount of elements inside of my level gen's rooms array. And now I can simply instantiate a random room from that room's array using the rand variable. Before spawning a random room though, I'll make sure that not only is room detection equal to null, but that the main path has also been completely generated. So I'll head back into my level generation script and turn the stop generation private bool variable into a public variable. This way I can access it via another script such as the spawn room script. 
And now I'll just check whether stop generation is indeed equal to true. Now, if I leave the code like this though, random rooms will endlessly spawn. So I'll make sure to destroy this pause empty game object once the random room instantiates. There's no need for it anymore. In Unity, I'll make sure to set the what is room layer mask equal to room. This way we're sure that the invisible circle will only detect game objects with the room layer. Also drag and drop the level generation inside of that empty slot in the inspector. Lastly, double check that each one of your rooms has a 2D box collider attached to it and that they also have the room layer or the circle won't be able to detect if there's already a room or not. And now hitting play, you'll see that once the main path has been generated, more rooms spawn to fill up the entire level. You'll notice how extra rooms don't spawn on top of the main path because the invisible circle had detected that a room was already placed there. Great. We're almost done with this level generation system. I now want to show you how to add random, exciting elements to each room. For example, I'll drag and drop the room with left and right openings into the scene view and take a look at it. For now, this room will always be the same. Each one of these spawn points will always spawn a tile. Period. Let me now create a new empty game object called nothing and turn that into a prefab. Now for example, I could grab one of these spawn points and duplicate it a couple times to create this extra row of tiles. I'll select all spawn points making up this new row and drag and drop inside of the objects array the nothing game object. This way there's 50% chance that each spawn point spawns a tile and has much chance that it spawns this empty game object. In other words, nothing at all. So as you can see, simply using the objects array, you can create a lot of randomness in a single room. You can create spawn points that randomly instantiate spikes, gold, even a monster. You can also make something called random chunks, which are basically a group of spawn points that one spawn point instantiates. For example, I'll duplicate a spawn point a couple times and make a sort of little platform shape the player can jump on. Then I'll group all these spawn points inside of an empty game object called chunk one, and I'll turn that into a prefab and delete it from the scene view. And now I can get this single spawn point spawning either nothing, just one tile, or that chunk. Obviously, the more chunks you have, the more randomness and excitement there will be. Of course, it's also a good idea to create a couple room templates for each room type. So I'll create a few rooms for the left and right opening room type, right left and bottom room type, and so on. Just place spawn points differently in each room template and get each to spawn different things. For example, one left and right room templates can be filled with spawn points that have a high chance of spawning platforms and loot, whereas another room template can be riddled with spawn points that will more than likely spawn traps and monsters. So once you've gone ahead and made a couple room templates for each room type, you can first of all create an empty game object called left right room template, add to that the spawn object script, and drag and drop inside of the array all of your various left and right room templates. Now simply turn that into a prefab and inside of the level generation script, replace the left right room with the newly made left right room templates prefab. This way the level generator won't always spawn the same room with left and right openings, but will spawn a random one. And yeah, do the same for all the other room types. And what you end up with is a wonderfully different level each time you hit play. So as you can see, not only can the system generate an enormous amount of unique levels, but you as the designer also have a lot of control over the layout and content of each room. It's a beautiful mix between random and handcrafted. And that marks the end of this tutorial series. I hope you had a good time and learned new things. From here you can take this project even further and build an entire game around this level generation system, or simply stop here and try building your own unique level generator using some tools and techniques taught in this series. Anyway, with that said, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. Each new subscriber and each like is so appreciated and very, very encouraging. You can also consider supporting me financially via Patreon like these amazing people. Alright, I'll see you very soon for lots more exciting game creation content. Cheers! <laughs>